day. Uh, my name is Nenesi Habi. I work as Director Research Support at the Northwest University, but I do my research uh, through the Unit for Environmental Sciences and Management, which is still in the Northwest University. So uh, we, we're going to get an overview of the book entitled Integrated Transboundary Water Climate Management Tools. Uh, this is volume one of the book series uh, entitled Water Security and Climate Adaptation in Southern Africa. It is common knowledge that most African countries face water stress. Uh, this prompts the need to provide reliable access uh, to water of sufficient quality and quantity in the face of increased urbanization, a changing and unpredictable climate uh, and economic instability. So, however, decisions on, on water uh, supply and climate adaptation continue to be attended to on a budget allocation basis instead of relatively accurate scientific information on the sustainability of available water resources. So, according to the SADC uh, uh, 2005, Water resources availability, utilization, and related infrastructure development in the SADC are hampered by significant variability of rainfall in quantity and distribution. And this, of course, leads to variability in water resource availability and usage across the region. Therefore, there's an urgent need to address the water and climate challenges jointly. That is uh, starting with the development and or improvement of water climate management tools suitable for the region. So the nature of the SADC region um, is such that there is a lot of shared transboundary water uh, causes and, and these contribute to challenges of water climate management uh, within uh, Southern Africa. Thus, in this book, we, we, we conducted studies on different river basins uh, in South Africa, Namibia, Tanzania, and Zambia. And, and we're using these studies to demonstrate the need for an integrated transboundary water climate management tool or tools, an approach to ensuring water security for the key sectors in Southern Africa. So a brief review of the water climate studies in the SADC showed that most water and climate studies in the region are conducted separately with a few exceptions uh, that, that seek to address the two together. That is, we have studies that focus only on water uh, and the studies that focus on climate, but we, we, we have that gap because we are unable to actually address the water issue without addressing the climate issue. So one should note that the effects of climate change, particularly rainfall variability and scarcity, are more intense in the most arid countries of, of, of the region, and in this case, Botswana and, and Namibia. Thus, um, most of the chapters in this book used Namibia as a case study because of the high aridity and the fact that the country depends entirely on shared transboundary water courses for all livelihoods. In chapter one, we found that most studies address the water and climate aspects separately. So the model development, verification, simulations, projections, etc., do not necessarily lead to a water climate output that can inform implementation of the existing policies and strategies within the regions. Moreover, only 30% of the studies that were uh, uh, reviewed could be linked to local adaptation and mitigation strategies. So mostly, and, and those were mostly in areas such as sustainable water resource planning, basin management, and water conservation. Modeling the impact of regional climate change scenarios on the availability of water resources in a semi-arid uh, river basin is one of the studies that we, we conducted and we used this in chapter two uh, 
to, to assess the possible impact of climate change. Uh, and this was uh, found to be occurring by mid-century uh, as follows. That is rainfall decreases by 14%, a decrease in surface runoff by 11%, and a 15% decrease in, in water yield. So we, we, we then said, okay, so it means there is a need to concentrate on the water balance components. And these actually bring together the water and climate, that is rainfall, surface runoff, and water yield. So regional climate models are widely used uh, in regional assessment of climate change uh, impact. Uh, however, the reliability of the individual models needs to be assessed before using their output for impact assessment. We noted that it is not always possible to determine the reliability of models without sufficient baseline data or field data. And, and of course, the SADC is challenged uh, by a lack of scientific data to inform policy and implementation. Thus, uh, we evaluated the effectiveness of the Africa flood and drought monitor, and we, we assessed whether it would be able to provide reliable information for precipitation extremes research, uh, for decision making, and for utilization by local farmers. Because remember, uh, the dependence on, on agriculture is, is high in, in our region. So basically then chapter three is where we assessed the AFDM. We could uh, uh, confidently say AFDM can generate historical data of more than 50 years. However, we found in this study that the data generated uh, were not always in agreement with ground-based observations of precipitation. This could suggest that the tool does not report one form of precipitation, that is the rainfall, because that is what the farmers are interested in, but rather it combines all forms, uh, that is rainfall, fog, snow, and other potential precipitable water uh, that is found in the atmosphere. So then we proceeded to chapter four and five. Uh, to investigate suitable tools to be used for short and long-term projections of precipitation and other climate-related extremes in the region. So reduced precipitation and water flows could intensify drought and scarcity, of course, and thereby diminishing agricultural productivity, endangering public health, impacting uh, the migration and settlement uh, uh, patterns and placing considerable strain on people's livelihood and social well-being. So um, the, 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 the two precipitation related challenges uh, in, in, in our region, of course, is uh, drought and, and, and floods. And so we, we, we had to, to confirm uh, the accuracy of the two um, tools in, in determining this so that we can be able to inform our planning in the region. Therefore, then we proceeded in chapter five to develop mixed strategy game models. These are needed for generating baseline data on the water uh, atmospheric interactions. And in this, we found dominantly year-oriented trends for humidity and temperature data. Uh, but station-oriented uh, uh, trends for wind speed data. The leaf wetness uh, profiles also follow more of a station-oriented uh, pattern. So observation of year orientation and station orientation patterns from the data simulations for some of the meteorological patterns suggest the need for large data sets from and from more stations for further investigation towards identifying generalized patterns in the whole region. And noting that, we proceeded to assess drought occurrence, frequency, intensity, and classification, 
and the effectiveness of the AFDM data generator using the SPI approach that is now in chapter six. Therefore, we verified the tools AFDM and SPI against ground observed data. So one needs to note that water climate information can actually inform planning in the agriculture and water management sectors. However, an understanding of the water demand and climatic effects is crucial to ensure water security in the SADC. Thus, in Chapter 7, we assessed the effective multi-sectoral water allocation plan in the Gafua Basin, considering the impact of climate change. So, of course, we did simulation of water allocation plan uh, using WIP model. So the simulation using mass bans principles uh, in allocating the water resources in the Gafua Basin also showed that climate change has an effect on the availability uh, of water within um, the basin. So with, with that in mind, we, we then uh, uh, approached chapter eight using a case study from Chongwe catchment. It is still in Zambia, like the Kafue Basin. And, and we, we, we assessed now the impact of, of, of uh, uh, water demand for irrigation uh, on water availability in the catchment. So the study observed that the water demand for irrigation has been increasing since 1963. Uh, so then this uh, is concerning because we depend on precipitation. We depend on expected increase in, in water flows so that we can sustain um, the irrigation in the region. So noting the fact that um, Arid countries, including Botswana and Namibia, do not have consistent surface water. They rely on groundwater for sustainable supply. We, we then used the study of the Kuisep River Basin in Namibia uh, for Chapter 7, and that is where we assessed groundwater availability in the region. We then had to look for what can we compute to determine the groundwater recharge, the storability, and abstraction potential within the basin. So uh, that is where now we, we, we considered uh, um, the, 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 the different uh, uh, models and approaches that are used uh, by different studies. And we ended up actually finding out that about 37.3% of the rainfall recharges the aquifers, uh, but the storativity is so low, around 0.09. So as a result, we also had to go further to look at the geology of the aquifers uh, in the upper Quisep uh, uh, basin. And uh, that is when now we, we, we realized that the hard rock creates a discontinuous water table with very low potential for abstraction. And why did we do all this? It's because the climate, as much as impacts the surface water, it also impacts the availability of groundwater. For instance, Namibia has high evaporation and low rainfall. It means then the, the amount of water that ends up recharging underground is only limited. And therefore for us to be able to come up with a, a suitable set of, of uh, uh, parameters that we can monitor to inform our planning, uh, we needed then to look at groundwater um, taking this approach. So what, what, what then, uh, now that we found out this, what are we suggesting? We're suggesting a conceptual framework uh, to assess the impact of climate change on water resources. The framework we are proposing is similar to the one proposed by Pegasus in 2009. That is where we are saying the change drivers um, are, are mainly 
around water availability and water requirements. And under water availability, we're saying the hydrology, the groundwater, the water infrastructure, and water quality should all be interlinked with the clim climate change or variability uh, aspects of a particular region so that we can then inform our planning. And of course, we would then need to do water resource assessments, and then we assess the, devel on, uh, the developmental impact, the adaptive capacity, the vulnerability, and the response of, of the different uh, communities. So implementation of the proposed framework will actually ensure effective water resources management and climate adaptation in Southern Africa. It will ensure transdisciplinary approach to selection, development, and adaptation of water climate management tools in the region. That is where now the researchers, water managers, and users all contribute to the development, clarification, and contextualization of the water climate challenges uh, within the region. And of course, the transdisciplinary approach uh, uh, to addressing the framework will also help with co-production of knowledge and the production and implementation of solutions. So taking uh, uh, the SADC forward, the combined effort of water and climate researchers, water managers, environmental managers, the private sector and local communities can help to improve on the climate, water insecurity and limited socio-economic development of the region. In a nutshell, we say, let us take the transdisciplinary open science approach and bring together the water climate models. We either model on the interface or we bring the two together and develop hybrids. Thank you.